good morning. Uh, thanks for joining me today for a level two Hatha uh, yoga class. Uh, today we'll be mobilizing the shoulders and hips, uh, preparing the hamstrings and the hips for uh, front splits and I'll be giving you a base to help you get on your hands be a little bit stronger in your hands so that eventually you can lift up into a handstand the very end of class I'll be doing some variations for a split um, and I shared that last week so uh, you have to really see what techniques really help you more I'm gonna be adding some weight so the weight really helps with moving the femur and, and I'll discuss that as I'm as I'm practicing with you some things you may not be able to do, you know, you, there's, there's a lot of base level fundamental things that you can use to help build upon that. And I've said this in other classes, anybody can get very um, flexible, strong. It's just, you have to use the right techniques and you have to obviously be patient with it. So how we're going to start is in a seated position. So I'm just going to be sitting with my legs, uh, my feet just a little bit wider than my shoulders. I'm just going to push through my hands and rotate my shoulders out. So with a handstand, you're really rotating the shoulders out. So I'm going to be moving my legs to the left and I'm going to move them to the right. And by moving the legs as you are, um, one leg is rotating in, one leg is rotating out. Um, I wouldn't really move really fast with this. I'd really work more of an integration so that you can really get to kind of see, um, where, where you're lacking flexibility or strength to, to create a bigger motion. Um, it, it doesn't have to be a full range of motion, right? This is just to help warm up the hips because eventually we're doing variations of side splits and front splits. Um, but you're really already doing that in any basic yoga class, you know, with warrior two and triangle and side angles, those are all, you know, lateral positions for side splits. And then with like pyramids and uh, twisted triangles, uh, those are variations of the, of the front splits. Uh, where you're three, and so they're all you. If you're you know practicing or been practicing, you're you're already getting there and prepared. And the, probably the biggest obstacle is basically saying you can't do it. So if you really desire to do it, you most certainly can. So just come back in the middle and push through the hands and lift the hips up and just move the weight around in the hands. So if I'm moving forward, I'm developing the front of my shoulder. So I like hands out in these types of positions, um, but I'm, I'm moving from the shoulder, deep within the shoulder so that I can rotate it out. Um, if I'm moving the weight forward, and you don't have to move as far forward as I am, it's gonna help open up the front of the shoulder. So I'm gonna be moving forward I'm going to be moving back. Now come back in the original position and just work on uh, getting your glutes engaged, your hamstrings engaged. They may already be engaged, but I do take the head back. I want to see if I'm turning my head in some capacity because um, the nose will tell you if your head's turned to one side more than the other. So for most poses, I really need to turn my head to the right. So then just come back in down to center and then just go back to bringing the feet over to the right, back up over to the left, um, back to the right again, and then over to the left. So just, you know, and then come back into the middle, have the feet wide, have the arms on the insides of the legs, squeeze the legs in. So as you're squeezing in, uh, the inner thigh is getting stronger, and you should also feel some space in the top of the hip. So I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not squeezing with all my might, but every three, five seconds I'm squeezing in and then I'll relax a little bit. And then in, in lifting again, it, it kind of uh, triggers a, a stronger muscular energy into the inner thighs, which really does contribute to why people, you know, struggle in their hips. So bring the feet together and with the feet together, have the hands beside you. Push the knees apart, push them wide, lift through the spine. So the more you develop the hips, uh, very good for the upper body, very good for the spine. Now, if you can, lift your hips a little bit off the floor. So push through the outsides of the feet, widen the thighs, widen the hips. Um, you know, maybe you're not up off the floor, but when you're sitting on 
props, like say you're sitting on a block or you're sitting on blankets or bolsters. Um, very good for the part of your upper body's posture, but it'll also help pry open the hips, you know, which is, this is external rotation. Then lower the hips back down and then come into an all four position. So when you're on your hands and your knees, I'm going to do different variations. So this is why I'm angled so that you can see me better. So I'm just going to push to the hands and round through the shoulders. And I'm just going to lift the knees just a little bit off the floor, just a little bit. So I want to use all of my fingers, all of my knuckles, you know, kind of get more sensitive in the hands so that you can really see what you're using in terms of this. This is a rotation through the shoulders and then just make it a little bit longer and then walk, move the hips back a little bit more and you can pedal the legs out as you pedal the legs out, you know, very good to do. And then we're going to come back to that quadruped position where your knees are slightly off the floor, you know, create good strength in the hands, draw up through the belly and the ribs, and then go back up and say the stance is, you know, I'm, I'm shorter with this approach in my stance, which is perfectly fine, but you know, can be longer. So pull back through the hips, rotate the shoulders out, and then one more time, come back to where your knees are just off the floor and push. This is a lot like crawl, um, very similar to crawling, which can be very, you know, a great practice in itself. And then what we're gonna do is if we can, just come down on the hands and turn the hands out and then just move the weight side to side. So I'm gonna eventually be doing some rotations like uh, to help develop the shoulder in a rotation. Because some people, they can, you know, they can do all these different things and that rotation in the shoulder may not happen because you, you'll have to use an, you know, greater force or greater weight. Then come back into the middle and if you can, turn the hands back towards the knees. So have the hands, you know, as wide as the shoulders if you can, move the weight around move it back, right? You can move in a circular motion, right? It could be really small, could be kind of big. I'm gonna move it back around, right? And then I'm gonna come back in the middle. I'm gonna move back. Now, when I bend my elbows, there's a lot more force in the hands of the wrists. So this kind of sensation is really like what it is, like when you're not in good alignment with a handstand. So it's not that we're doing this to promote poor posture or alignment when you're doing your handstands, but you'll probably be out of alignment. So you're really preparing to not hurt, hurt yourself when you're doing your handstands, kicking up or, you know, jumping up into them or using the wall. So come back into the middle. And then what you're going to do is just push to the hands. Now I'm going to take my right hand off the floor and I'm going to be in the tabletop position. So I'm rotating my shoulder away from my thumb and my right arm could be up. Now with the right arm up, I'm going to rotate my arm in and I'm going to rotate it out. I'm going to rotate it in like a washcloth. You're wringing it out and then rotate it out. So push strong through the left hand and then bring the right hand down and then just come back into that quadruped position. So round through the shoulders, pull through the ribs, and then what you'll do is you'll lift your left hand off the floor, you'll step through, and then now you're in a tabletop. So I'm, I'm, I'm corkscrewing my arm open, so I'm rotating my shoulder open, and it's, it's a gradual process. You could take the left arm up, and then as you're pushing through the hands, lift through the hips, but you really wanna be lifting through your lower back, not just lifting from the pelvis. You wanna articulate through the spine. Now rotate the left arm in, rotate it out, rotate it in, rotate it out, one more time in, and then back out. And then you can bring the left hand down and then just come down on the knees, right? And turn the hands back towards the knees one more time and just move the weight side to side. So just kind of come back into the middle. And then as you're back in the middle, we're gonna turn the hands forward and then set yourself up for a plank. So lift the knees up off the floor, hollow out through the belly. If you can bring the weight more forward, so it's a leaning forward. And again, this is not where you wanna be for your handstand. It's more for it to uh, promote better strength 
flexibility in the hands, the wrists, prepare the connective tissues for a greater load because you know you are bringing your whole weight, uh, body weight over the hands. Go back up into a down dog and then back into a down dog, you could pedal it out. Then you can move the weight around. I'm gonna bring my left hand under my lower back and I'm gonna come forward into a plank. So you might be off on an angle. Um, still think your left hand is down to help you. You could look to that too. Then go back up into a down dog. So push strong. And this is just really good to kind of see like which arm you're using more. Bring the left hand down, bring the right hand back behind you and then come forward as you come forward. Use the front of your body, don't just use your hand. So get more strength through your abdominals. If I bring more weight into my left hand, it's more like a side plank. So try to keep more weight in your right foot, just so that it's not so left side. Then bring the right hand down, you can go back up into a down dog. So again, you can pedal the legs out, moving the legs out, and then walk your feet forward to the middle of your mat and walk your hands back towards your feet. So just slide, if you can, the left hand underneath the, the left foot. Bring weight into the hand if you need it. I could even rotate my shoulder out slightly, just a little bit, right? And that'll help create some space in the wrist. Take the left hand out and then bring the right hand underneath. And maybe you can see this better. I'm turning the eye of the elbow forward and that's helping to rotate the shoulder out. Like I feel nothing in my right hand. I feel everything in my left hand. So I really do work on my left side more. And if you find that you're doing that more and it's really irritating you, you know, it's telling you not, not to do so much because uh, it, could, it could do more harm than good, right? So come back into a forward fold and just take the hands back into the middle. And if you can, lift your left foot up off the floor. So this is hip compression, right? I'm lifting it into my chest. Now, if you don't have flexibility in the hamstrings, just bend the knee and pull it into the chest, right? Do that again on the left side. So again, I could bend my knee to pull it up and then I could bring the right leg up and then I'm gonna bring it down and then roll yourself up into a standing position as you roll up or standing here. Just have your hands beside you or behind you, hook your thumbs. Just see how you hold your weight in your feet. So when you get into handstands, a lot of times people fall out to one side because the weight's too much in one hand, right? Or they have to, they go into their weak side and that side's really not really ready to, to support that weight. And then they'll topple to that one side. So come up on the toes, lift the heels off the floor, get nice and tall, long. You want to root to expand up and out all these great directions and then lower the heels. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have my feet together if I can and just manipulate your fingertips around the knee. So there's a lot of different points between um, uh, the IT band and the hamstring is a good point. It's where I have my hands. And then um, above the kneecap, above the patella, this is an area that just gets really kind of gristled and not, does, there's not like a lot of blood flow. Um, so, you, you know, I'm manipulating the tissue. So eventually when we do deeper squats, it's easier to do. Now, grip wherever you need to, but just do some circles. And, you know, a number is uh, good to have and it's really to kind of get you to do it. But there's really, I say this often, there's really no perfect number. Um, I did about four to my right and then four to my left. So when you're out of alignment, that's what's happening, right? In walking, running. Uh, so you're preparing to do that, right? And then I'm gonna come back up. And then when I come back up, I'm gonna take my feet, wide my stance for a horse stance. So about five feet, you can turn the feet out. You can take the arms out wide and then I'm gonna bend the knees I'm gonna push the knees apart. So initially stay up, you know, get stronger in your horse stance and then push the thighs apart. As you push the thighs apart, you know, create more space between the hips. Now, if you're really wanting to work on more flexibility, you could sit lower, right? 
You can, it could be like a down, two, three seconds, then come up. It can be a down, that's what I'm doing, right? And then back up, and then back down. I'm, you know, I'm still active, even though I'm going into a deeper range. And then come back up, and then just take the arms down. Now, if that was difficult for you, right, just bring the feet in, just stand, right? It's easy for you to make the stance a little bit wider. I'm just gonna do it one more time. And this could be gradual, right? You could just get really wide with your stance. So I'm gonna turn the feet out, take the arms out. We'll push the thighs apart. So glutes govern a lot, you know, whether you're doing body weight stuff or, you know, weighted training, like an external weight. You want the glutes to really support you in the way that you are moving through space or holding yourself in space. So just bring it up again and then bring it down and then bring it up and then bring it down, right? And then bring yourself back up and then just step the feet back together. And then if you can, I'm gonna bend my right knee. I'm gonna stretch out my quad. So this is a one-legged squat, right? It's, I'm gonna do more some Cossack stretch work to get into the hips. And you need a full flexion of the knee. So if I couldn't flex my knee fully, I put something behind the knee, like a washcloth or something like that. And I worked out. You can bring the right foot down and take the left leg up. You know, I grew up wrestling, so full flexion on my knee has never really been uh, difficult for me because of those. We're always in those types of positions as we train or as we compete. So you can lift up through the upper body, pushing strong through the right foot. And then I'm gonna bring the left foot down. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the feet out wide again. And, and you know, like I said about Warrior positions, you could be doing warriors as opposed to a Cossack mm -hmm. stretch, but Cossack, it's longer, it's wider. There's more range involved. The feet can turn out. So I'm gonna sit, and, and I know it looks out of alignment in terms of yoga, and, and it kind of is, but it's really to help expand the pose. I'm gonna turn my upper body to the left. But I wanna keep my upper body over my pelvis. I'm going to push through the right heel. I'm going to sit into the left foot. So I'm upright, really wide. I'm turning my upper body towards my right foot. So when you're sitting deeper in these positions, the knee shouldn't hurt at all. So let's say it hurts a bit. Don't sit lower than that. Actually sit higher and you'll gradually, you'll be able to sit lower. Bring yourself up and then sit into the right or the left, whichever side you're on but really try to push the thighs apart. You know, and there's a lot of, you know, uh, many layers to this. So it's not just about sitting low, bring yourself up, sit to the left. Now I could have my hands on a chair. I could have my heels elevated. That makes it a lot easier. So you could do it that way. Then bring yourself back up and then just come to, you know, straight legs, but lift the thighs up and out. So as you lift the thighs up and out, it's, it's a way to get longer, wider. Now I'm taking my stance wider, not that you have to, but if I do, it shouldn't hurt at all in my knees or my hips. Being uncomfortable is definitely part of this if you are wanting to do more in terms of range. Like it, 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 it is very uncomfortable, almost nauseating. So you can bring your feet back in a little bit closer and then go back to turning the right foot out, the left foot out. Now sit low if you can. Now I'm gonna lift my left heel up off the floor. So I'm lifting my left heel up. Now it's more targeting more of the hamstring. So push through the right foot. Of course you could use your hands. Then sit into the left foot. So I'm, I'm more hamstring. And for me this is easier because I have better flexibility in my hamstrings than I do in my adductors. Like front splits are easier than side splits for me. So push strong through the left foot, sit into the right, be nice and tall. Again, your knee shouldn't hurt at all. You know, being a wide angle forward bend, you know, you could do that as, as opposed to this. I'm gonna sit back into the left. Again, when the toes are up, it's all hamstring and it's hips, arms could be stretching out. You could get lower with the elbows. Uh, those are good practices and drive through the left heel, bring yourself back up, then bring the feet you know, back together, back into a neutral stance. So just 
take the, the legs neutral. Right? This is a bit of a sissy squat. So I'm gonna bend the knees. You know, knees go past the toes for that type of position. So I'm, I'm sitting, but I'm, I'm doing this more to support your knees than the last things that we were doing. So you wanna get strong around the knees as opposed to just sitting low. Like I can sit low here. I'm gonna bring the hands down. I'm gonna bring the knees forward. Pull from the abdomen and then lift the feet. Or lift the knees. Bring the hands down and sit on the tops of the feet. Now you could interchange a block, of course. You could do this without your hands if you really wanna do it. Um, I'm gonna come back up on the toes. I'm gonna lift the knees. I'm gonna bring myself back up. Good, and then I'm standing. So there's a lot of range between, I really believe in rotational back bends as opposed to just going straight back. You know, straight back has its place, but it's much easier to rotate because the spine is designed to, to rotate. Good majority of your spine is meant to twist, not necessarily extend. You know, if you look at any anatomy book, you can see that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up on the toes, I'm gonna sit back or spring forward. Again, your hips are, but I could touch a chair and then come up. So just imagine that there's a chair behind you and you could do that. So I'm reaching back. I'm just giving you a feel for what it is because eventually it's a full, all the way back foot or floor, right? But this can be very healthy if you do it right. So tailbone is down. And then as I move my tailbone down, I'm lifting up to the chest. I can look to the foot and I can bring myself back up. Well, I'm not gonna go all the way back, but eventually maybe we'll do that. But that's very good in exposing the front of the body, which is back bending. And it is tied into splits, right? So come onto your hands and your knees and come into a plank. In a plank, we're gonna slowly lower all the way to the floor. Right? And then as you lower to the floor, take the arms forward into a Y position and just pull the ribs away from the floor. So ribs are in and then take the arms up off the floor. So thumbs turn out, arms lift up. This is a lot like a handstand. So if I'm all my weight is in my chest, I'm really an extension. You don't want to be extending when you're in a handstand. You want to be pulling in, right? Then bring the head down, and then come up onto the elbows, pull yourself forward, lift yourself forward, right? Bring yourself all the way down, have the hands just underneath the shoulders, tuck through the toes, lift up into a plank, so round through the shoulders, and go back up into a down dog. So pedal the legs out, if you pedal the legs out, you can, you know, move it around, Reach for your right thigh with your left hand. Mm -hmm. Bring that down. Reach for your uh, left thigh with your right hand. Bring it down. Reach for your calf muscle with your left hand on the right side. Bring that down. Bring the right hand outside the left. Right. Bring it down. Reach for the ankle, the heel. Bring it back. Turn, twist. Right hand for left leg. Again, it could be ankle, heel. Just using this as more as just moving you. And then bring the right hand back down. And then come down on the knees and sit back on the feet. So what you're gonna do now is, if you can, is a pike push-up. So pike push-up is a lot like a, it, it, it requires a lot of strength in the front of the shoulder. So if you've had problems with chaturanga and stuff like that, just stick with, you know, low push-up is Chaturanga, Dandasana. So if you struggle with your front of your shoulder, right, um, you don't have to do bent arm practices. You could do a side plank, right? But I'm going to save that for later because that is easier. So I'm going to bring my hands down. I'm rotating the shoulders out. So as I'm rotating the shoulders out, right, eye the elbow forward, but it's really from the shoulder. Don't worry about so much of the eye of the elbow. It's really, can you feel the shoulder integrate? And then lift up through the hips, or just lift up into that quadruped position. So pull in, and then pull back. And then when you pull back, so if you, you don't have the, a lot of flexibility in the wrist, like I said earlier, 
turn the hands out. So I'm gonna come forward with my chest and my head and then bring the knees down and just, well, you know, maybe that was so much effort for you and that's all you need to do. But I'm gonna do more, but that's what you could do is you could use the eccentric to come down and then you could press back up eventually, right? So I'm gonna press, come back into the quadruped position and then lift up and back. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come forward for some, some push-ups, some pike push-ups. So I'm gonna come forward with my head, my chest, my elbows are in, and then back up. And then I come forward and back up. So when you're doing this, if it's like, ah, oh, you already are seeing some negative signs, I would stop. And, and then you could do it later today or you could do it tomorrow, right? So come back forward, back up, forward, and back up. So press back with the thighs then, and then come, come into a down dog. And in a down dog, you can pedal the legs out, right? You can move the legs around. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my left leg forward or take it up. I'm gonna pull it into my chest and I'm gonna make a big rounding circular motion with my leg. I'm gonna pull it into my chest, my nose. You can take it up and out. Bring it back forward and in. And then take it up. Now take it, reach through the right heel and then open up through the hip. So press through the hands. Bring the knee and nose together again. Take it back up and then uh, bring the left foot forward into a lunge. And into a lunge, just bring the hands on the inside of the left foot and just move the weight around. Just kind of find, and you might be like, oh yeah, that's the angle that I need. And that's obviously what you're, that's where I would stay from most of my um, hold when I'm holding these. I'm moving it in, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my back foot up off the floor, I'm gonna pull it up and in, and bring it down. I'm gonna pull it up, I'm gonna bring it in, I'm gonna bring it down, and then I'm gonna take it up, and then as I take it up, I'm gonna hold with my left hand. And this is what we did earlier in holding the foot in the standing position. So move your upper body to the left, widen through the shoulders, widen through the back, right? And I'm going to release the foot and I'm going to come down. I'm going to get lower with my hands, my elbows. And again, same thing. Just try to move the weight around so that you're not just, um, you're not, a lot of times people will go where they're already flexible. And then they're like, I'm already, it's kind of done, right? There's nothing more to improve upon, but most likely angles that you're not exploring. And that's what I would work towards. Now come back up, and if you can, reach back for the foot again. And then kick it back. Right? Move the upper body towards the left leg. And, and then you can release that, and then come up into uh, where the back knee is coming up. You're going to come up into a high lunge. So come up. So think I'm in front of you, and I'm trying to get your ribs to pull in. Right? So I'm going to come up, and then when I come up, to a straight leg position. I'm gonna hop my right foot in. I'm gonna have my left hand on my left hip. And then I'm gonna move forward in space but pulling the left hip back. Now the right hand can come down. You don't have to twist, right? But you could, you could push strong through the left foot. You could take the left arm up. I'm gonna rotate the arm in. And I'm gonna rotate it out. Really work on rotating the arm out. It's most likely what you need. Rotate it back in and then move it out. Now, really, again, the head of the shoulder, think of it rotating back uh, away from your face. Now, you could, again, be up on a block, chair, all relative, right? And then you could bring the hands down, and then you could step the right foot forward, being a forward fold. Um, separate the feet, you know, about the width of the shoulders, and, and sit, if you can, into a squat. And then into a squat, Use your left arm and your left knee and take your right hand behind your head. So really lift through the chest, push through the heels of the feet, get a little bit more lift through the upper body and the spine, and then bring the right hand down. 
Um, we're going to come back and do a down dog. So step back. I'm going to move the other side just so that you can see me better. So once you're in down dog, pull back through the thighs, pull back through the hips. Maybe you're doing a back bend in between. All right. Pull back and then take the right leg up to the ceiling and then pull the knee into the chest. Pull it in and then take it out. Big rotation through the thigh, through the hip. Bring it into the nose. I take it out. So keep lifting through the right leg and knee. Bring it back in. This is hip compression. Pull it in real strong. Then take it out to the right. Rotate out. And then you can open it up. So you're opening your stance. And you can turn to the right or you can turn to the floor. I would do what's uh, more difficult, not easy. And then bring the right foot into the nose and step it forward. And when you step it forward, um, bring the back knee down the floor, move the weight around, just the hips. Then take the hands, you know, over to the left, look over the shoulder, bring it on the inside. I'm, I'm, again, I'm moving the weight around. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my back foot up off the floor, I'm gonna pull it up and in. I'm gonna bring it back down. I'm gonna bring it up and in. Lifting it, bring it down, and then bring it up again. And then you could, you could put a strap around your foot. You got some socks on. You could loosen up the sock and grab the toe of the sock, and you could pull it to you. You could also kick away. I would, I would practice both. Pull it in with the right arm, but also kick it away with the left leg. Both will help. Now bring your foot back down if you brought it up, and then get lower. And then as you get lower, so those of you that can't squat, you can turn your foot out a little bit, the front foot, and that's could be better for your knee, your front knee. So move it around, see where you keep the weight in your elbows, that's if you're lower. But you could be certainly on blocks, but this low position will really help you in coming up into higher positions. You know, like camel and um, variations of pigeon. And then bring yourself back up, and then when you come up, you can reach back for the foot with the right hand. Now I could be up on my hand, I'm on my elbow. You know, um, don't, don't just do one, because you might not necessarily see what's better. Honestly, it's actually more difficult in my hip if I'm up on my hand. So you would think being lower is better and not always the case. So you could kick the foot away into the hand. You could pull it in with the hand and the arm. And, and then you can release that. And then just take the back knee off the floor. When you take the back knee off the floor, come up into a high lunge. Lift through the pubic bone. Draw in through the ribs. And again, from the waist to the hands, you know, this is ultimately a handstand. And then you can have the right leg straight and move the left foot in a bit closer. Have the right hand on the right hip. Pull the hip back as you bring the hand on the inside or the outside of the left right ankle. So I'm turning through the upper body. I'm going to take the right arm up. I can rotate the shoulder out. I can move it in. And maybe just doing the classic way, which definitely has its place. Rotate out. Rotate it in. Rotate it out. Really deep rotation through the shoulder. And then bring it back to you know neutral and then bring the right hand down and then step the left foot forward and then when you're left footed forward you can come back into a squat again just a resting squat you, know, you want to sit lower you know feet can turn out right so i'm going to bring my right elbow or arm you got to be careful with the elbow when you're bringing the hand on the floor if you didn't know that and then take the left hand behind the head and lift through the chin, lift through the chest. And if you can remember squatting to the other side, and you could also do that, you'll see where, which side is more difficult to twist to. So keep lifting through the chest, keep pushing the knees apart, and, and then you can bring the hand down, and you can just be in a rounded position. Now, straighten out through the feet, and come into a forward fold, and then roll yourself back up. As you roll yourself back up, come up in standing position. Um, take the feet out wide again. 
and I have very long legs, so it's never, you know, when I was first learning this stuff, what was prescribed in terms of the stance was not necessarily right for my anatomy. So if it feels long, it's too long. If it feels short, it's too short. We're gonna go back into the Cossack stretch. So I'm, so I'm gonna turn my right foot out. I'm gonna be more active initially. So, you know, Kung Fu is arms out wide and you're turning the upper body to the left. There's a lot of different ways, just like your yoga, you can do it many ways. You're lifting yourself up and then push through the right foot and then lean into the left side. And just again, you might, you know, it's like, for me, it's all what's happening within my left hip. So my foot is turned in or slightly out. And I'm turning my upper body to the right. You know, this is a longer stance than say where you're two side angle. So it's more hamstring and hip orient in terms of range. Then bring yourself back up, come back up, then just widen the stance a little bit. So make it a little bit longer, a little bit wider. Take a few deep breaths, breathe in, breathe out, lift the thighs up and out. If you gradually do this stuff, it's not necessarily advanced. You know, it's really just, you know, a continuation of what you already know. So bring the feet in a little bit closer. Again, we're gonna do the, the uh, Cossack stretch, but I'm gonna turn the foot up again. So I'm gonna lean into my right side. I'm gonna elevate my left heel up. Now, you, again, you can have your hands down. So once you get a rhythm of it, you know, you don't necessarily need the hands. So I'm playing around with being low, but also being up. So I don't wanna get just, I wanna be able to transition, right? So push through the right foot, sit into the left foot, widen the thighs, you know, you can turn to the foot, you can grab the foot, have hands down or arms up, but keep posturing up, then push through the left foot, go into the right side, again, the hands are down. Now, you could bring your hands behind you, we're gonna sit down if we can, um, again, maybe just in a forward bend or something like that, but I'm gonna gradually press out, right? And sit down without my hands. And then I'm gonna move my right foot in, more like a hurdler stretch. I'm gonna come forward over my left leg, but I'm lifting my leg into my body without my hands. We'll do that eventually, right? But you wanna be moving the leg up. It could be moving down too, right? but people get caught up in just using their hands and then they really lose. Like you can see how low I'm getting just from pulling up, not just because I'm flexible, right? Now hold the foot if you can and try to take the heel. If you can just a little, this is very difficult for me, partially why I've had some problems with my knees over the years is I don't have a full extension of my leg. So my knee's constantly in a bent position and it's hard on the front of the knee. So when you're in these types of positions, it's not bad to lock the leg out or take the heel up off the floor. It's actually very good for the knee. And then bring yourself back up. Now, you could just come up and go to the other side. I'm gonna lift my right knee up, drive through my right heel, bring myself back up, come over to the left side. So when I'm off to the left, I think that you're lifting your right foot up off the floor. Use your hip flexor. Then gradually, of course, bring your hands behind you right to sit down and then sit down. Then you're gonna bring the left leg in and you're gonna come forward over your right leg. So I have a wall, so I'm, I'm just using the strength of my abdomen and my hips. And this is my more difficult side in terms of forward bending. So I'll work it longer. Or I'll, you know, spend more time on it, but I'm trying to lift my right leg into my chest. So pulling it up and in, you know, getting, you know, I, I can see just by looking at myself, I can see that my right thigh needs to rotate in more. And, and if my knees turned out, that's, if you are looking at that, that's what you'll need more. Then bring yourself up and then hold the foot and, and, and I'm, really depends on how big your calf muscle is or how big your calcaneus is, your heel. So maybe you can't take the foot up off the floor, but I'm pressing the back of my leg into the floor. And this is part of the splits, right? Now bring yourself up, use your hands if you need it, lift the knee, push through the left heel. You'll see that yourself, you have to pitch forward to come up. 
Try not to do that because it can be really hard on the knee. So drive through the left foot, lift yourself back up. We're gonna go to the right, not all the way down. You're gonna come back up, go to the left, bring yourself up, and then um, bring the feet a little bit closer in. You can set the feet back together. And then we're gonna go back to that sissy squat a little bit. So just get, take the arms forward, bend the knees. So this might be your sissy squat initially. So just this kind of first position. Knees could be in, you know, that's how some yoga practitioners or traditions teach it. You can bring yourself back up. So again, maybe you can't do this full range. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring the tailbone down, hips forward, right? I'm gonna look to my left foot. Now again, a stack of blocks, a, you know, but I could reach back for my left foot and then bring myself back up. So don't get caught up with touching the foot. It really doesn't matter. Then, you know, bring the hips forward, tailbone down, look to your right foot, right? Maybe you can touch it, bring yourself up, go back, left side, left foot, left hand, right hand, right foot. And there could be other places you could touch. Again, if it's just not happening, don't worry about it. You'll be able to do it one day. You can bring yourself back up. So when you come up, we're gonna come forward on your hands and your knees. Go back into that quadruped position. So push through the hands, round the shoulders, lift the knees up off the floor. And then what you can do is step back. If you step back, you're in a plank. Spin the heels to the left. Take the right arm up to the ceiling. Rotate the arm out. Rotate it in. Rotate it out. So both shoulders here are rotating out. Bring it in and then rotate it out. Bring the right hand down, spin the heels to the right, take the left arm up, rotate the left arm in, rotate it out, rotate it in, rotate it out. Now again, I'm pushing down through the front of my right hand. I'm rotating my right shoulder out. And then bring the left hand down, the left hand down. Come down on the knees and sit back on the feet if you can. So this is partially what can help you with the sissy squat that I did earlier. And just if you struggle with um, hamstrings, I mentioned this before, where you manipulate the feet, hamstrings really start to loosen up. So um, you might not be able to, I'm gonna show how you can walk up the wall in doing a handstand and, and maybe don't do it, but let's say you're interested, but you're like, nah, I don't, I don't want to do that, but what could I do? So if, if I'm not walking up the wall, I'm just going to come up into a down dog and get familiar with just transferring the weight. Right hand, left hand, right hand, left hand, right hand, left hand. Then you're back in a forward bend. Then bring it forward, come into a plank, hollow out through a plank. So this is a good practice, just this. Then walk it back, right? As you walk it back, you know, then you could walk it forward. You could do plank. You could also just watch. If you want to just watch me do it. So I'm going to bring my mat over to the wall. Um, eventually I'm going to use the kettlebell for um, splits. So when I go back, um, you know, you, you just don't want to slip. Um, all honesty, I don't really use a yoga mat very much because I like being able to do my practice on any surface. So, but I want you not to slip. So that's what the yoga mat's really for, so that your hands don't slip. So you wanna really protract through the shoulders and just relax. Like you're just going for a walk. It's, don't worry about it. Don't worry about how high you get your feet up too. But in terms of alignment, this is probably one of the better ways to do it. So I'm gonna walk back with my hands. I'm gonna walk back with my feet. I'm gonna step whatever leg is easier to come up. For me, it's my right leg. I push through the hands, and then I'm gonna lift up and see how I'm gonna transfer the weight from hand to hand. And you don't have to go all, I don't really recommend you go all the way to the wall yet, but try to get more hollowed. Look to the wall rather than your hands. You look to your hands, you arc your back. You look to the wall, you're, you're in a better line. And, and I'm 
you know, really pushing strong through the hands. And then before you have to fall out, right, walk it back out, just like we did in down dog. And then bring the feet down and come into a comfortable position. So let's say you just go up for a few seconds. That's a good start. Do it, do it before every meal, something like that. I really believe in that form of practice, especially if you don't have a home practice, just get in the habit of practicing before every meal. That's an excellent way. Just interlace the fingers and rotate the hands. You rotate the hands, you'll manipulate the wrists. Very good for the wrists. And then what we're gonna do is, if you want to, is you can do the splits with me. So a hurdler type of stretch with the wall or a couch or something is really great. I did it last week. So you can refer to that video. That was the Friday's class last week. So I like a little extra padding. I'm gonna fold up my mat. And then as I fold up the mat, I'll just bring my blocks over in case I need them. I like to slide. Some people really um, frown upon that, but I like to just gradually slide into it. So I'm gonna put my socks on to do this. Um, so Hatha Yoga used to be a lot of this, just uh, you know, incense and socks and stuff like that, it, candles. But the socks will really help you. So I'm coming forward onto my hands, my knees, and then I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sit back. I'm gonna do my left side first, just so that you can see it better. I'm gonna step back with my right knee and then I'm gonna step forward with my left leg. So first I'm not gonna use the weight, I'm just gonna do it a couple times. So I'm just gonna move forward and it's really not about getting the hips down. So if you can't get your knee to the wall, just bring it forward more. So last week I taught it where you're just in a more long lunge, which is really great, right? So this is, this is, this is where I'm, I'm assuming some people will be, and that's great. This is a great place to start. But as it gets easier, you know, what I'm going to do is I'm, gonna, I'm not going to be with my leg up. I'm going to come forward into a split, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to be high up on the blocks. I'm going to come forward. But remember what I was saying about before is I want to be able to lift my leg up my front leg. Not that it's gonna come off the floor, but I wanna be able to engage in that. And that's what is helping me to bring the leg more forward. It's not more forward, really. It's, you think of the head of the femur is sliding back into the pocket of the pelvis. And that's, you know, why people can get low and why you're not as low is a number of reasons. You can bring yourself back up, slide the left leg back and then Again, the knee doesn't have to be fully at the wall. And then step the right foot forward. And just kind of move the weight around like I did earlier in the lunge. Just move the weight around, you know. And I could slide it forward, you know. This is a lot more difficult when the foot is up. So it almost makes it easy to do it without having the leg up. So that's why I'm kind of doing this. But like I said, maybe you're just bringing the knee further away from the wall and you're in a really long lunge, you know, which is not unhealthy, it's not dangerous. There's, there's more focus on the pelvis and that's really what needs to be manipulated in order to develop the splits for a lot of people. So I'm gonna slide my right foot forward a little bit more and then I'm up. Now, I didn't do this on the right side, but you could have the block underneath your thigh and you could lift up. I'm never, again, I'm never really concerned, like, oh, I didn't get low today, you know. Um, it's really more quality, like think of everything as becoming more quality enriched as you practice and then everything is better and you will go further, you know. You just, you know, just press, press, press. That has its place, right? But it can also be very frustrating and defeating and you can hurt too, right? I'm gonna pull back up and then just say you're like, oh, I'm so done with that. I'd sit in Virasana, you know, and you can watch me if you want to. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it with the, the kettlebell just to give you some insight. I said this last week, when I do this, sometimes I'll, I'll do it on my sofa. So it's really soft and cushy and it's nice. 
So I'm bringing my left leg forward. So before I do that, I have to bring the weight up into, and it could be a dumbbell, right? It's just a kettlebell sits better. And you don't have to play with it. And then once I'm in the lunge, I'm gonna slide the leg forward and I'm gonna load my hips with the kettlebell. Now I'm gonna, so it's a little extra weight, but like I said, it's a lot of extra weight, it's actually 20 pounds. So it's, it's, I wouldn't go beyond this, especially if I'm just starting this, but I could press the weight up and then you can kind of see how I can um, come a little bit more forward. So I'm pushing my back foot into the wall and I'm elevating up towards the kettlebell. And then I'm gonna bring it down, bring it into the block or the floor, bring yourself back up. So when you come out of this, step the left foot back, slide the right foot forward so that you're just in a basic lunge and you're just you know preparing yourself, relax. Like it's not so important that you get it. I'm gonna transfer the weight over to the left side. And then the, if, you, if you are using a kettlebell, it sits on a diagonal. That's for snatching, cleaning the kettlebell. I'll go over that at some point. All that stuff is gonna be up on my website, my YouTube channel. I'm gonna do all these things where giving you free information to help you better your practice. So first I'm gonna bring the kettlebell up with one or two hands, then it sits in the hand. I'm gonna press it up. And then just to come into it a little different, I'm gonna slide forward. And then as I slide forward, again, this is my more difficult side. So I'm maybe not gonna go as far as I can go. And I'm gonna gradually go into that. So once I lift the leg up, or try to lift it up, I'm trying to go up. I don't wanna just go down in any pose. I just want, I wanna keep getting stronger in the pose. My back foot's pushing into the wall. And then I'm gonna slide my right foot back, lower the kettlebell down, bring it into the block. All right, and then I'm gonna come into a seated position where my legs are forward. My legs are forward. I'm just gonna move my feet because that can be heavy on the knees and there's ways to take all the pressure off the back knee for your splits. All right, and then go back to having the knees bent, push to the hands, elevate the hips, rotate the shoulders out. You can move the head back in space. So just some updates. You can bring your hips down and then just sit um, in an easy squat. So push the, arm, push the knees on the arms, elevate the chin, the chest if you need to. So we made, Winnie's made quite a bit of masks. We're, we're starting to hand them out. Um, well, we have an Instagram account that we'll update you with so that you can see pictures of it. Some first responders, they, they're not allowed to be photographed. But we'll take pictures of all the masks and we'll give you updates of how many we've given away. All 10% of all the proceeds are going towards the um, uh, producing the mask. Like I said, uh, my YouTube channel is John Witt Yoga, or it's just John Witt. And then all my classes and content that I'm producing will be on there. And, and some of the things that I'm writing about are more on my website, which is John Witt Yoga. So just come onto your back and just do a light twist. So just come back down, take the knees in the chest, take the knees to the right, and bring the left arm over to the left and you're just rotating. So breathe in, breathe out. And as you're you know, turning your head and you're widening your shoulders, you can open and close the left hand Let's say it still kind of feels intense in the hand, the wrist. You can move the fingers of the left hand. Then you can take the knees up. You can take the knees over to the left side, over to the right. You can look over the right hand. You can breathe in and out. And bring your legs back up. Hold on to the outsides of the feet. Push the knees out. Just an you know, easy, happy baby. And this, you know, from what we did today, should be a lot easier to do. But at some point, things get tighter before they become more 
flexible. So that, that, that's something that you'll experience. You can release the feet and you can lie back on your back and you can fully, fully relax. So relax your hands, relax your feet, you know, uh, especially if you did all the class, it's great. Um, glad that you could do everything. And if you haven't, you know, I've, I've said this before, you just gradually increase your capacity no matter what the class it is that you like to take. Um, so get heavy through your skeletal system, get more relaxed into the tissues, breathe in and out, um, keep observing your body. Um, it's not bad to reflect on what you're thinking of, of course, uh, but you just don't want to be in a constant loop, especially if it's negative. Get heavy through the chest and the shoulders get wider. And then as you get wider, you know, you get more space, easier to breathe. And then uh, you can relax throughout the face, the eyes, the forehead, the scalp. So you may have to be somewhere. Um, you can always bring awareness into your hands, your feet. You know, you can wiggle around. Say you're like, ah, I just want to lie here longer. I would definitely spend more time. And um, if you did set up, uh, sit back up, uh, we greatly appreciate the support. We love um, that you like the classes and that you continue to take the classes. Um, send me any uh, questions you may have. Again, I, I'd like to support you as best that I can. Or maybe it's just a hello. All right. Uh, have a great day. Have a wonderful weekend. I'll be teaching a live class on Sunday at 9 a.m. Eastern, uh, Hot the One class. So. You can share that with people and like the videos that I'm producing. It, it really helps me. So thank you. Namaste. Namaste.